Love It or Leave It is being recorded from the only safe place in Los Angeles, my backyard, with the safest audience you can imagine, a handful of boosted people I employ who tested negative this morning. Let's get into it. What a week. On Thursday, the Supreme Court blocked the Biden administration's requirement that employees at large businesses either vaccinate themselves or test weekly while upholding a vaccine mandate for most healthcare workers in the U.S. COVID has the best lawyers. Uh, On Hannity this week, that's it. On Hannity this week, that's the joke. That's what we did. Lindsey, we started off strong. On Hannity this week, Lindsey Graham called out Mitch McConnell for his disloyalty to the 45th president when he said this. Well, elections are about the future. If you want to be a Republican leader uh, in the House or the Senate, you have to have a working relationship with President Donald Trump. And Senator McConnell effectively work with the leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump. Obviously, this is pathetic for all the ways in which it's obviously pathetic. But a working relationship with Trump is such a ridiculous idea. It's like claiming to have a working relationship with a coyote that came into your kitchen by accidentally using the doggy door. Meanwhile, Senator Kirsten Sinema gave a speech Thursday supporting bills that enforce voting reform, but reiterated her opposition to eliminating the filibuster. These bills help treat the symptoms of the disease, but they do not fully address the disease itself. Sinema went on to say, so then naturally the patient asks, how am I supposed to address the underlying disease of division? You never explain that part. So the doctor says it's simple. There's a great centrist in town by the name of Kirsten Cinema. Go see her. Then the patient weeps and says, but doctor, I am Kirsten Cinema." <laughs> in fairness to Kirsten Cinema, one way to eliminate the disease is to kill the person. President Biden announced today that the government will be distributing N95 masks and one billion at-home COVID tests, twice as many as previously promised. Your nostrils won't know what hit them. (laughs) Biden told members of the press, we promise to have all the tests and masks you need before COVID-22 escapes from the lab. I've said too much. (laughs) During a Senate Health Committee hearing, Kansas Senator Roger Marshall accused Dr. Anthony Fauci of shenanigans and claimed to be unable to find Fauci's financial disclosure. Senator Patty Murray interrupted the arguing pair to confirm that Fauci's financial disclosures are public record. Amid the row, Fauci said this under his breath. What a moron. Jesus Christ. What a moron, Jesus Christ. Fauci may have lost his cool, but he still passed the test. He never pulled his hand out of that little pain box. In a new interview... No Frank Herbert fans? A lot of Dune heads? That's okay. In a new interview with the Today Show's Craig Melvin, Vice President Kamala Harris had a moment. Does the administration say, you know what, this strategy isn't working. We're going to change strategies. Six former administration officials last week wrote that open letter urging the administration to change course, to change strategy. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. And so right now we know we still have a number of people that that is in the millions. And that little girl was high as shit. (laughs) People are saying that Vice President Harris lost her train of thought, but I think that's deeply unfair. She's just uh, respecting the Biden method, confuse and disorient. (laughs) A man has successfully received a heart transplant from a genetically engineered pig. It's an incredible achievement for science. In fact, the doctors were so elated that they tried not to let it bother them when the recipient insisted on eating the rest of the pig. (laughs) That was just for me. I don't know. That joke worked on no one. I kept telling people I thought it was great. No one agreed. Just think about it. He gets a heart transplant from a pig. He wakes up and says, bring me the rest of the pig. It's not wrong, per se. It's really weird if that were to happen. Apparently, also, the recipient of the heart did stab a man. Yes, not not after. (laughs) Long before. Long before he stabbed someone. He then went to went to jail for it and then was released. And then but the family of the person who was stabbed are a little upset that he got the heart. I don't think that's right. I don't think I don't think the hearts are just for people who don't stab. <laughs> it's no moral test for people. Yeah, you can get a people heart. 
Is it ethical to give a man who stabbed the pig's heart? Sure it is. It's not an ethical question. It's unrelated. And great news for me personally, a new study published in the Journal of of Nature Products. That's tough. (laughs) I didn't realize that. They suggested that cannabis compounds help prevent COVID-19 from entering healthy human cells. It's finally a hydroxychloroquine for liberals. I am sure that this will be debunked. Don't tell me. (laughs) I don't want to know. As far as I'm concerned, weed is God's booster. I'm going to be living my best fucking life. (laughs) Meanwhile, a doctor who branded his initials onto a patient's liver using an argyne. (laughs) I like it when people gasp at the news itself. Yes, a doctor branded his initials on patients' livers using an argon beam coagulator. He's been removed from the medical profession and is no longer allowed to practice. Say what you want, but targeted advertising has gone too far. Who's going to see that? (laughs) A heroic African giant pouch rat detected over 100 landmines in Cambodia and died at the age of eight. He only found them because every single one was under a slice of pizza, but still was incredible numbers. Lisa Bonet and Jason Momoa announced their decision to separate after four years of marriage. They're getting joint custody of Lenny Kravitz. The FDA is revoking its 1977 standard requiring French dressing to consist of at least 35% vegetable oil and vinegar, lemon juice, or both. Now, anything can be called French dressing as long as it's bottled in the dressing region of France. (laughs) And finally, this is tough. And finally, Robert Durst died this week at 78. Just months after being convicted for the murder of his friend Susan Berman, a crime explored in the HBO true crime docuseries that closed with Durst seeming to confess while wearing a microphone. I like to think that Betty White, Bob Saget, and Sidney Poitier said, what took you so long at the exact same time? Then a sly smile spread across Robert Durst's face as he replied, jinx. (laughs) Once again, let's welcome the wonderful Marcy Jaro, who will join Adam and I as we spin the rat wheel. Here, slide over, pundits in the way. This week on the wheel, we have Novak Djokovic, fans in every room, raccoons, and just like that, Shangela's all-stars ousting, shoelaces, peacock, and the inability of people online to recognize that life is full of risks. You know how it works. We spin the wheel wherever it lands. We ran about the topic. Let's give it a spin. It has landed on raccoons, I believe, suggested by Marcy. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the thing about them is they think everything is theirs. Like, <laughs> like truly, you there's nothing you could do to stop them. I recently put vi- uh, like cameras outside my house, and they are truly terrorizing the neighborhood at all times. We have a little family of three. It's a mommy and... T- <laughs> See? That could have been a raccoon. Uh, it's a, a mommy and two babies, and I've watched them since they were little, but... Two years ago, I was feeding feral cats in an effort to try to trap them, neuter them, and then release them. And these... Wow. So I... So I had to feed them. Labor intensive (laughs) activity. Oh, it was too much. And there was one cat who was very limpy. Whatever. Uh, (laughs) I put food out and these raccoons would fight anyone. They fought possums. They fought skunks. And I was like, I gotta stop this. I found a a dismembered possum baby in the, my front yard. So I was like, I got to stop this. It's coming to blood. You know, they still come back all the time looking for food. And then I swear they look right at the cameras. Like they're mad. Like they know. They and they su- have opposable thumbs. So you know what they can do to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They got those yeah. little thumbs, yeah. those little <laughs> thumbs. Uh, Ronan, uh, when he was a child, had tiny little uh, um <laughs> uh, he had bir- you had a uh, uh, birds chicks right yeah. and he raised chickens and uh chickens were getting picked off by raccoons so they brought them in the house uh and then the raccoons broke into the house yeah. found the chickens in the bathroom killed the chicks and then the little fuckers washed their hands in the toilet no. and left wow. is that right ronan to wash up professional assassins <laughs> And to leave a message, too. Yeah. That's why I don't like them. I mean, I do like them. They but left, they they left think... one chick alive to tell the story. <laughs> like, Just... And they wash their hands. And... <laughs> <laughs> They're very cute, very scary. <laughs> They're little thieves. All right, let's spin it again.
It has landed on Peacock. Who sug- yeah, it's not that interesting, but I, I, I find the Peacock app to be like a, a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's like the, the thing with, with streaming apps to me is like, there are a couple of great ones, so we know how it's supposed yes. to work. Yes. Why Speaking make my... it so hard? It makes no sense. Like today I was on Peacock <laughs> watching MacGruber <laughs> bringing it back. <laughs> I know. Jesus Christ. And I was just kind of browsing around. And, and if you're on a page for a show, you can't browse the episodes. You can only access that one page with an awkward shot still from the show and then a synopsis. But do you know what I'm talking about? I know like exactly the sh- the what you're talking is about. incredibly difficult. And it doesn't make sense to me because, hey, like, you know, Netflix, the one that didn't exist, then said, we're going to make the one thing and then became the biggest thing in the world. Just do what they're doing. Do, do exactly what they're doing. Right. Do you notice how none of, none of the things that you're doing, Netflix is doing? Do you think the people at Netflix didn't think of not showing people the next episode? Right. You know, just do what Netflix is doing, Peacock. Just do what Netflix is doing, Paramount Plus. Come on. No, I don't want to watch a behind the scenes <laughs> of last week's succession. I want next the next episode. But there's also a, par- a little Paramount Plus quirk is if you've stopped a show like halfway through and then you come back to it later and you just press play they start no matter where you are in the show you have to sit through the 10 second Mm -hmm. paramount plus logo you bet you bet you do you know you know what i'm talking about and paramount plus basically guesses where you are in the episode if you pause an episode and come back later they're like we kind of remember we We, rolled the dice we think we think this is what you wanted that's right and you we pay for these like you bet oh yeah like we have to pay for this to be bad. That's right. Peacock doesn't even let you know what you've clicked on. Like no. they'll they don't know what like if you hover on something, it's like mm, could be this one, could be this one. They're all kind of dark, right? And I will tell and there's one other thing uh that all these apps kind of do, which is the thing that they are interested in showing you the least is the thing you're currently watching. Yeah. They will hide from you what you're in the middle of. Like, hey, like I'll just mention Paramount Plus. Uh you know I've been watching Drag Race two to three times a day for the last three months. Where the fuck is it? Right. You know, Ronan? <laughs> <laughs> Let's spin it again. Speaking of, uh, this is a very specific and brief rant. This has to do with the ousting of Shangela on All Stars 3 of Drag Race, which aired in 2017. <laughs> you fucking messy bitches. Getting rid of Shangela, that is some horse shit. In 2017. Was, <laughs> in 2017. In 2017, there was a terrible injustice committed against Shangela, who came to that All Stars composition as assured and confident and comfortable in her own skin as any drag queen has, who had grown as a performer, who had grown as a person, who came every day and crushed it. And then RuPaul, who works in mysterious ways and who we do not question, and who I, who I for whom my position is very clear, they and only they can frack wherever they want. <laughs> That's it. No, no. I've thought about it, and I'm sorry, RuPaul can frack wherever the fuck RuPaul wants to frack. That's my official, sincere position. No one else decided to let the ejected queens vote on who would go to the final. And against God's law, the laws of of humankind sent Shangela packing. It was despicable. But it takes nothing away from Trixie's performance. Of course not. Of course not. (laughs) Let's spin it again. It's landed on shoelaces. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so I don't leave the house a lot uh, for a couple years now, about 22 months. I've been staying inside a bit. Uh, and so when I do have to leave, I mean, I'm wearing shoelaceless boots right now. I can't, I can't, I can't, I I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, It already, I don't understand how long it takes to leave the house as it is, much less to add in 
tying and la- like shoelaces. I don't know. And then all my cats have eaten through all the laces. Then what do you do? There's no backup option. <laughs> when the cats eat the laces, you're fucked. That's it. You're done. Why do we have, I just want to pull them on. And I really, I know it sounds like I'm joking right now, but I actually like have cried about it. Do you have tuna scented shoelaces? I honestly think it might be my feet. My feet stink. My feet stink in a very interesting way for them. <laughs> wow. I, um, okay. So that was like surprisingly, and we've had a lot of rants on this show, like a lot of rants, like hundreds of I'm, rants. I'm hot. That is truly the saddest and most pathetic rant. Oh, yeah. In the history of this show, because it seems like you're angry, not at shoelaces, which are, of course, not responsible for any of this. But in fact, cats and also yourself. (laughs) But we're truly like, why haven't we moved past it? Like how silly. It's a string. This Mm -hmm. is 2022. I know there's a lot of problems we can't solve, but we should be able to figure it like why don't we go back to Velcro? That was smart. Velcro is smart. It was very smart. Reebok with the Velcro. Yeah. I, I am. I feel like literally my ears are hot right now. I feel like I've revealed too much. <laughs> <laughs> I have a potential solution for okay. you. I saw on Shark Tank and have brought them into my life and I'm actually wearing them now. They're elastic shoelaces. So you put them on your shoes and they look like regular shoelaces, but it turns any shoe into a slip on. Adam, I would have never known. Yeah, I know. Wow. You can't tell. I can't tell. Wow. These are elastic right here. On Shark Everyone Tank, get a good say. look. <laughs> on Shark Tank. On Shark Tank. And they, she got turned down by everyone. <gasps> but I was like, Dumb that's sharks. a good idea. It's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Have you okay. considered, uh, I don't know if this idea has been on Shark Class, cl- uh, Shark Tank. Shark Class? <laughs> have you, shark Class. Have you considered uh, putting your shoes uh, in a closet? Oh, yeah. They have run of the house. They're worse <laughs> than raccoons. I see. I see. All right. Let's spin it again. It has landed on, and just like that. Second only to MacGruber, I feel like this show has been talked about <laughs> tonight. I, Because you've been talking about it on Pods Save America and stuff, I was going to come on and defend, and just like that. Please do. I want to hear it. I'm so excited about this. Uh, just a nanosecond of backstory. I had COVID uh, <laughs> classic, I guess, the yeah, b- yeah. pre-vaccine, uh-huh. and- was uh, alone because I was shooting the show Severance in New York without my, I was with my family or anything. So I had to shut in the apartment for 10 days and watched Sex and the City in its entirety. Or I, I had seen it back when it was on, but it has been years. And then watched the movies. And the TV show, I thought, was, you know, looking back on it as something that's, 20 years or maybe, you know, something like that old. It's pretty extraordinary what what it is. And it was just a terrific show, really funny. There's some stuff that hasn't aged well, of course. So then this show comes along and now, you know, like right at the end of my COVID uh, uh, uh spell this thing gets announced and i'm just like oh my god i can't i can't believe uh um this is happening there's a lot there's a a a lot to to say about the show but there's something about them taking a show that was a 22 to 25 minute comedy and just slowing it down to like an hour long length and not even really depending on jokes to the point where it's not even really a comedy anymore. And I'm not saying that as like a a knock on the jokes they're writing. I I mean, it's like they've just sort of slowed down some much quieter show. Of course, there are clunky things here and there, but I admire a lot about the show and I feel like people are (laughs) shitting all over it. And for some reasons that are legit, but I also think there's a lot of good to it as well. Um. Disagree. No, the uh, uh, no. I, so uh, here is uh, my deeper problem with this show is, uh, and, I, and I'm on a text chain with a bunch of people that were huge fans of the old version, right? Yeah. I think that that's hard. People that were the biggest of fans are like, this isn't what I wanted. And I think for uh, 
uh, women and some gay men, like, oh, this was something that showed a kind of version of being a single woman or a gay man in New York that was really exciting in your 30s. And then all of a sudden they're in their, in their 50s, like, oh, sex in the city is coming back. Let's see what it's like when these gals have fun in their 50s. And they're like, no fun for us. A yeah. lot of death, a lot of drinking. And, and look, one thing that just happens to a lot of uh, middle-aged uh, white women in New York is they go into a cryogenic tube for 20 years, learn nothing about the culture, and they come out of their cryogenic tube and they're each just signed a woman of color as a mentor slash teacher yeah. to sh tell them about things like dating, Diwali, yeah. uh, uh, art, uh, race in America, yeah. uh, transgender issues. These are all things that I think middle-aged white women in Manhattan, just they just get, an, it's, it's something that happens uh, through the city. Yeah. Uh, you get assigned a kind of mentor, yeah. uh, which is one of the things that hasn't been seen. And, and, and shame on me for not appreciating that that's something that happens in real life and yeah. is a good part of New York City in 2022 post-COVID. Yeah. I think something that's really strange about it is that the original show was creating culture and showing us where culture is going and breaking through and 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 kind of like I said, kind of creating its own culture. This one is trying to wedge its way into culture and asking, is this culture, is this right? Ah. And kind of getting in there. And that's jarring, but I think it's cool that they're trying as clunky as it can be. And and I totally hear what you're saying and and see it, but I also think it's at least they're trying to to do something. I think it's intentional. You think it's intentional? I think it's intentional. I'm giving them a benefit of the doubt here that they are trying to say something about what we feel about older women. About, But I, again, I may be giving them- That they're too, cloistered and yeah, that protected. They try and, and they think that they are up to date, but that they are not. And it's too much of the benefit of the doubt, though, I think. But I have- High hopes I will never stop watching it. I will never stop watching it. And I'll say one more thing. So Samantha uh, uh, broke up with the, her best friends for decades because Carrie didn't hire her to do PR for her book. <laughs> then Carrie's husband fucking dies. And Samantha texts how sorry she is. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Has Ronan been watching all along with you? No, uh, Ron he comes in, yeah. he pops in and out, he pops in and out, and he kind of pops in, he sits down, he goes, my God, this is a joyless show, <laughs> and then just walks out. Hey, what's all this then? You got some kind of a show going out here in the yard? Stop it right now. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> oh, well, Ronan told us we have to leave. That's our <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, Adam Scott, Marcy Giroux, thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me.